What's up animators and welcome to On The Go, a series where I show you short but useful manual tips within 5 minutes. Today I want to talk about colors, so let's begin. First things first, how do you get all these options? I get this question again and again and it's really as simple as clicking this option. You're gonna see this, if you wanna get more options just click this icon, it's the same with scale, you can just open it down, click around, you'll see what happens. So if you really want to understand all these options, we gotta talk about additive and subtractive color mixing. You probably know them to some extent, so let's talk about additive first. Additive color mixing stands for light mixing. It stands from red, green and blue. So say you have a red spotlight and you decide to add a green one and intersect them, together they're gonna form yellow. And just like on this image you can see the red and green form yellow, red and blue form magenta, and blue and green should create a form of a cyan blue-ish color. And if you mix all three together, you get white. This is how light into interacts. This is the same principle based on which your monitor works because you only have red, green and blue pixels on your screen. They just mix together to give you all these colors. On the opposite side we have subtractive color mixing. This is something you've learned in our class where the main colors are red, blue and yellow, although red is magenta and blue is cyan. It's a little bit inaccurate. But if you mix them together you eventually get red, green and blue and in the center you get a dark brownish ugly color. That's why in printing they usually add black as well. So what does this tell us? You have an add function for RGB. The red Redstone block is already red, so what if we add blue to it? If you take a look at our image, we should get magenta. If I do this, you basically see what it does. You're adding this color onto the previous color with additive light mixing. If you go up, you're adding white. White plus anything is always gonna be white. And you're pretty much just adding this color onto your existing texture. Next, you have subtract. If you go to white, white is 100%. If you subtract the maximum amount of light, you're gonna get black. This is gonna be easier to show you on the white cube. So if I subtract red from this, I'm left with blue because they are the color opposite. So I, I take away all the red and what I'm left with is blue. White is my starting point. White is maximum. If I take away blue, I should get yellow. If I take away magenta, I should get green. Perfect. So we're taking away the color and multiply. Well, <laughs> it multiplies. Now that I have white, I'm going to be left with the color that I choose because if you multiply anything with white, you just get the same color again. Say I want to multiply the grass block. It's going to get red. Basically, all the pixels are going to get red, except the different color values are now going to be different brightnesses of red. So the darker the color, the darker the red at the end is going to be. It works with any color. You basically just eliminate all the other colors. You're left with only one. There is some traces of the other colors left, but red is most aggressive. That's why I picked red here. Multiply is used with grayscale textures. When the texture is just black and white, you can assign a color to it and make it look clean. Going to black will obviously give you black, because if you multiply with the darkest, you're gonna get the dark. And now the bottom three are a little bit more complex, I'm gonna say. This stands for hue, saturation, brightness, just so you know. So let's start with the first add option. First off, if you go left and right, you're gonna be adding the hue you have selected. And if you go up and down, you're gonna add the brightness. So if I come back to the grass block, this should be red now yeah this should get brighter so up and down is the brightness left and right is the hue if you go up and right you get both the lightness and the hue and then you can obviously change the hue as you wish but even if you're on the starting point and you change the hue you're gonna see some effects there so that's a little bit wonky I guess now we have subtract it works the similar way if you go right you're gonna take away all the color because you subtract all the hue and if you go up you subtract all the lightness so if you subtract all the light you're obviously left with black and if you subtract all the saturation, you're left with no colors. It works the same on any other object, just so you know. And finally, we have multiply. It works in a similar way. So if you go, if you go left, you multiply with zero saturation, so there's no saturation. If you go down, you multiply with zero brightness, so you're left with a dark surface. If you change the hue, though, you multiply with a different hue, and you get some different color variations. Now, the last thing you should know is you probably know it from before, but if you raise the brightness, you eliminate all the shadows. Your object will still cast shadows, mind you that, but you eliminate eliminate the brightness in the SSAO it causes. And finally, mix percent, you pick a mix color, and the more you raise the mix percent, the closer it just gets to that color. It's gonna change it into being the color you picked. You can always just change it later. That's so you can change hues of different blocks and get some interesting results. And now you know how it works, I wanna see you get creative with it. That's all for me today, hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, you can show your support by liking, subscribing, all that stuff. With that on the side, I'll see you next time. Stay sharp.